Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. There's a war going on in America. A hidden war between citizens and criminals. The violent and the vulnerable. The strong and the weak. There's a new weapon in that war, the video camera. It can be a deterrent or an enforcer. In the hands of the police or private citizens. What you'll see tonight is graphic, troubling, and real. It is a frightening view of crime seen through police dashboard cameras, hidden surveillance cameras, undercover stings, videos made by those who uphold the law and those who break it. What you'll see is the hidden face of crime and the exhilarating triumph of justice. Technology and law enforcement united to even the score. Video has become a powerful tool of law enforcement, used by the police and by private citizens for defense and for protection. Criminals have learned that the camera leaves them exposed and vulnerable. They know they're being watched. If the perfect crime is the unseen crime, then video is the unblinking enforcer ever watchful, ever vigilant. Convenience stores were among the first to install surveillance cameras. No one, not even a police officer, is more vulnerable than a convenience store clerk. Orlando, Florida. How many? They two dollars a piece. Uh, three of An elderly clerk alone and unarmed goes one-on-one -on -one with a deranged thief. His only witness is the video camera. The device locks the door, trapping the thief inside like a caged animal. The clerk calls the police. You're on your way to jail. The thief finally smashes his way out. Surprisingly, he is caught by a passerby. His declarations of innocence dissolve when police show him videotape. He is convicted. Melbourne, Florida. A surveillance camera captures a rip-off in progress. In his attempt to steal the cash register, the thief is momentarily stymied because he forgot to unplug the cord. The clerk gives chase and gets a license number. The man is arrested. The videotape confirms his identity. When choosing targets, criminals ask two questions. How easy is the score, and how big is it? Las Vegas, Nevada. Nowhere are the stakes higher or citizens more vulnerable. This five-man crew of rip-off artists, a distract team, orchestrate a $10,000 heist with the finesse of a football play. The team leader oversees the operation, communicating with a series of complex. The members move in. There's one problem. An observant young couple may have noticed his signals. Something is amiss. A comrade moves in to provide a distraction. He asks for directions in halting broken English. The couple
couple cannot quite make out what he is saying. They are distracted. Safe from their watchful eyes, the gang carries on behind them. The leader himself has realized he needs to provide a critical distraction. The man to the left of the mark. At the same time, this man in the flowered shirt creates a commotion. Did you drop this hundred dollar chip? The crowd at the window turns to look. The mark stoops over to pick up the chip. All eyes averted, the point man grabs the mark's $10,000 from the counter. With surgical precision, the team exits. The mark has no idea his money had been on the counter, much less stolen. He's still waiting for the payout. Because of this video, the gambler was reimbursed by the casino. The thieves were later caught. Frustrated by the proliferation of video cameras, criminals retaliate, using disguises or devising new strategies to counter the threat. West Palm Beach, Florida. A burglar breaks into an appliance store. Conscious of the video camera, he has masked himself. But the disguise is inadequate. His distinctive nose and glasses lead to his being recognized as a former policeman. The ex-cop is currently doing time. San Bernardino, California. A gang posing as Valentine's Day shoppers inspect the merchandise in a jewelry store. Without warning, one of them pulls a gun. After collecting $50,000 worth of jewelry, the bandits make one final demand. Helpless and alone, the jeweler is forced to comply, knowing that the camera is witnessing the crime. But the tape is a dummy. The real videotape, concealed elsewhere, ensured their ultimate apprehension. Video provides more than just a record of the criminal act. It allows us an unprecedented and frightening view of the criminal heart, cold and callous beyond description. Case in point, Ormond Beach, Florida, a pawn shop. This robber gives no warning before ruthlessly striking out. Amazingly, the seriously injured store clerk was able to wrest the bat away and chase the thug out the door. Police arrested him two hours later and the videotape provided positive ID. He pled guilty. Sarasota, Florida. Without warning or reason, a gunman fires on a defenseless clerk. I don't see nothing. All right? I don't see nothing. The videotape reveals his assailant's shocking disregard for human life. The clerk survived. The robbers escaped with $23. West Palm Beach, Florida. A customer enters a jewelry store. Sensing trouble, the owner is jumpy and suspicious, with good reason. Two years earlier, robbers overpowered and maced him, escaping with several thousand dollars worth of jewelry. This videotape led to their apprehension and conviction. Since then, the jeweler conceals a semi-automatic pistol on his belt behind his back. What occurs next is terrifying. The robber pulls his gun, the store owner his, but the safety is on. The jeweler cannot fire. I looked 
at myself and I said, oh my God, I've been shot. I'm gonna die. I can't die. I have twin two-year-old little girls. And there he was just running to the door after he unloaded his gun on me. And then I see that he's coming back towards me. He comes running back into my office and put his gun to my head and says, give me that watch. And I said, take my watch. Please don't kill me. And he took the watch, put the gun back to my head and pulled the trigger. He thought he had another bullet in the gun. And when he realized his gun was empty, he turned around and ran to the door. All I could think about were my girls and that they would grow up without a father. And they asked me every day, Daddy, why do you have all those boo-boos on your stomach? And I tell them, well, that's what the bad man did to me. And they say, Daddy, why are you crying? And I tell them, that's what the bad man did to me. This brutal criminal, a potential murderer, is still at large. The best hope for his capture is this videotape. If you know who he is, contact your local police. He should be considered armed and dangerous. Coming up, three desperate fugitives take down a cop in a horrifying act of violence, caught on the officer's dash camera. Arrogant vandals tape themselves, destroying everything in their path. Ruthless criminals film their terrifying rampage of violence. Are you a Nick Garris. What's the date on that? I'll have to plead guilty if I got to work because I can't take the board to take the day off. Now just give me the thing let me get out of here. I did do nothing wrong and I know I did. Now let me get the out of here. I got to get... I ain't in no hurry, but I did want to get some kills for my dog. It's just about ready to get... Get out of here give me that. Can I explain it to you, sir, so you'll know what you need to do? I know what I do. You're ripping me off, and I didn't deserve it because I did do nothing wrong. You're probably sitting on a pike lot driving right back and forth to get someone in the 40 miles of whatever it is. I never saw the sign. I saw it 55, and I was doing 57. That's all I know. Now, just give me the damn thing, and I'll look at the date. If I'm working, I'll pay the fine because I can't afford to take a day off. And if I'm not working, I'll plead not guilty because I know well I'm not guilty. There. Now, are you a state or local? Looks like you're a state trooper. Get back and pick up some more guys and run up the deficit on, 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 on a working man. Just give me the damn thing and let me get out of here. What I need you to do is sign the X so I can explain this to you. There ain't no explaining. I got picked up for speeding before. You're guilty and you pay the fine and hope your insurance don't go up. And you try not to speed the next time. And that's what I've been trying to do for four or five years, and it's worked damn good Do I run into you, you Green copies for your record, sir. I don't... All right. White copy needs to be mailed in within 20 days. Okay. Read the back of this hard copy. This will explain how you can have a trial if you want. On the back, that will explain it. Attaches an envelope. See? Put a stamp on that, you mail that in. I don't They'll tell you what to do. Well, I can afford the stamp. The fine's right here, sir. It's $137.50. You're crazy! Oh, oh, I can't! You're crazy! My wife took money out of her damn account where she's working to pay my insurance so I wouldn't get picked up. You're crazy! If you don't pick this up, sir, I'm going to summon you for littering. I'll pick my a hundred... Are you crazy? I wasn't even speeding, you damn... A hundred and some dollars! Right! There's some more right there. I've never heard of a phone like that in my life, you... Bye. 
Technology has made video cameras completely mobile. In police work, the camera has evolved from passive observer to active participant. The best example is on the dashboard of the patrol car. The camera has been extremely helpful to law enforcement. Now the jurors are able to actually see what these officers are talking about or what other witnesses are talking about. There is no lying on anybody's part because the video shows exactly what happened. I'm afraid he's going to hit somebody and cause some damage. The dashboard camera has perhaps been most important to officers in the prosecution of drunk driving cases. How do you see a driver's license, please? Yeah, stop right there. What? How much have you had a drink tonight? Nothing. Not a thing. Not a thing. Okay. Uh, do you know the alphabet word? I like it backwards. Backward. Oh, I didn't ask you to say it backwards. Can you say it frontwards? Yeah, A, B, C, D, F, F, G. Okay, do you know the whole alphabet? You always say the whole alphabet, not backwards. Now keep your eyes closed. Touch your nose with your right hand. Right back. Put your arm back. I can't do this sober. Okay. I cannot do this okay. at all. Step right back over there, please. Okay, reach out and touch the tip of the pen for me. The pen. The pen. Not your chin, the pen. Okay. Just reach out and touch the reach out and touch the tip of the pen for me. Is Jim. that the tip? Gee, man, no, Chris. You got, you got the, the results of a lot of that video footage uh, as it relates to drunk driving cases, uh, many times it's very humorous. But the true essence of it being that that person was so intoxicated, and yet this guy, like, you know, thousands uh, every year, is out driving his car. And I'm placing you under arrest for driving under the influence of alcohol, okay? I need you to turn around. There is no such thing as a routine stop. All officers are trained from the beginning to treat every situation that it could be a volatile situation. Here, this is a South Carolina Highway Patrolman, and this is probably the most shocking tape that all the law enforcement officers that scares them the most. 30 or 45 up there. But that same car is going to be the one that's going to be on this one. It's going to be on this one. And what he does is he goes down and, and chases, and with the help of citizens, catches that vehicle. They are conscious of being shot and stabbed and jumped on, but they don't think of being struck by oncoming traffic. Sir, I ask you to wait right here, okay? Okay. okay. lone cop on a road at night is powerless and vulnerable. The dash-mounted video is often his only partner. Get on the radio and call for help. Yeah. Thanks to the motorist, help was immediately summoned. The officer sustained minor injuries and was back on the job two months later. You okay? No. This illustrates the point that an officer should always leave the mobile video running. You never know what kind of evidence it might capture. Any police officer in any jurisdiction makes any stop of a person. It's the fear of the unknown which runs through their mind, which runs through their emotions. Because when they stop somebody, they don't know who that person is. They don't know what crimes may have just been committed and what this person is willing to do to keep from getting captured. 
This is Constable Darrell Lunsford from Nacogdoches County, Texas. And what Darrell did was face a very volatile situation alone on the side of the road without any backup, without any assistance other than the video camera that was mounted on his dashboard. Give me ID. Give me ID on you. No, sir. I'm with uh, my brother. My brother has the ID. I was up in a wreck. Do what? I was up in a wreck. When the suspects opened their trunk, the officer was overwhelmed by the scent of marijuana. It was now essential that he rigorously follow police procedure, but he did not. They did what we would call a classic prison takedown on Constable Lunsford. They attacked him one low, one high, and they were able to knock him off his feet. They roll him over on his stomach. They kick him in the head three times right here. And right there, a shot is fired, killing Daryl, and as you can see, the shooter stands up with Daryl's gun and flashlight in his hand. He never had anybody ride with him. He never had any backup unit. And we built uh, by hand the mobile video system that is in his car at this point and the one that actually recorded his capital murder. It's been documented that an officer is killed every 57 hours in the United States. So it, that does become a, a part of the job. But when we actually see it captured on video, uh, it does make it that much more personal. Uh, it just it sends a chill down your spine uh, to hear an officer screaming for help, uh, to hear an officer, uh, in that instance, uh, it's his last conversation that he has with anybody is uh, what's on that tape and what's heard on the other end of that radio. And then there's no more. When they did capture the individuals, uh, because the videotape actually looks different than someone in person because it's two-dimensional. They took Daryl's camera, put in a clean tape, and actually photographed the individuals that they had captured to see if they looked like the same people that were on the film from Daryl's camera the night of his attack. All three of them were arrested. They were tried in the United States District Court. They were all found guilty and given penitentiary time in federal penitentiary. Coming up, paintball outlaws prowl the streets on a midnight shooting spree. A helpless victim videotapes his own violent beating by a neighborhood bully. A street gang unleashes its rage and fury on innocent victims. As technology creates smaller, more easily hidden video cameras, they become weapons of enforcement, invaluable in the execution of stings. As electronic eyewitnesses, the evidence they provide is incontestable. Los Angeles, California, car theft capital of the world. A luxury car is left parked in a high crime area under surveillance by deputies. devices to shut off the motor and lock the doors 15 seconds after the theft. tries anything to avoid capture.
La Crosse, Wisconsin. A woman hires a man to commit a crime. What she does not know is that he is an undercover cop and that he has hidden a matchbook sized video camera inside a hat lying on the dashboard. Nice hat. You like that, huh? Yeah. I want to hug to make sure you're not wired. You want to hug me to make sure I'm not wired? Okay. There you go. Thank you. All right. We all got to be safe, don't we? I agree. I understand he wants me to do some work for you. That'd be really nice because, um, first, um, we got married June 29th. Who are we talking about here? My husband. Well, my soon-to-be ex-husband, I hope. Um, he won't get me a divorce. He won't support me. And he's just kind of being an all-around... He beat me after we've been married three months. Beat me until I was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And no man will do that and get away with it. I'm sorry. I, I love me too much for that. And that's who we're talking about. She's so talking about your husband? Mm-hmm. I guess, what do you want me to do to your husband, Carolyn? I don't want him on his earth anymore. What are we talking about? When he, you know, if that doesn't mean anything to me. I, I know lots of people that say those things. Do you want this guy beaten up or do you want me to kill this guy? I want him dead. Okay. He ain't getting no money unless he's dead. No, I just want to make sure here, Carol. No, a lot I of people tell me this. Dead. I mean, I will pay to have him dead. Dead as a doorknob. I will even help bury him. Mm, well, they'll cut down on the cost. That's right. No matter what an officer is doing, they want to make sure that they're operating within an acceptable envelope so that they're able to get the charges against the individual. Um, but do the sting in such a way that a later allegation of entrapment does not get leveled against them and become a way for the person to avoid justice. You know, every once in a while when I shoot these people, these people have a tendency to suffer. Does that bother you at all? No. <laughs> not at all. Sorry, I didn't mean to laugh, but no, not at all. Okay, because, you know, it does happen on occasion that, I gotta, that I've got to shoot them twice because I don't hit them right the first time. Okay, it happens. Have a good day. You too. And I'm going to have me a wonderful weekend. That would be her last weekend of freedom. She is now serving 18 years in a state penitentiary. Her husband was granted a divorce. Coming up... Kids on a senseless rampage of destruction wreak havoc through a million-dollar suburb. A beating victim stings his ruthless attacker in a shocking home video. The unbelievable ritual of criminals taping their random acts of violence. Chicago, Illinois. Here, the video camera takes us into a world of crime beyond imagination. An undercover inspector acting as a fence for stolen postal checks sets a dangerous trap. To save his own life, he must use the only language this criminal understands. This scene may play like Goodfellas, but it is dangerous and real. You know what? You give me all your money, I'll blow your head off right now. Give me, give me the money. You want the money? Yeah, bitch. All right. You right now. It. You got it. You want the money, you got it. And you call, Wait. and you call, man, give me that. All right, you, you got, got, you got the fucking car money. take me out of here. Take All me right, out of here. Hold on just a second. You take, I'm not going to shoot you, I bitch, just, but you're going to take me to Potomac, okay? To Potomac? Wait, what? Potomac and Austin. I'm going to dope deal, okay? All right, hold on. Just hold on for a just second. Turn just, the car before. I, All right, all I'm doing is I'm talking to you for a second, okay? Yeah. So just be cool for a second, and we'll talk man, about it. Man, up and move the Car before I shoot you in the f stomach. You got it. You want to move? Yeah, yeah, we're moving, bitch. This is a federal case. These checks. Who the f think you f with, bitch? I ain't f with no. Well, get reversed and get the f out of here. Get the f out of here. Just point that thing away from me. You're making me. Nah, I'm gonna put it right here. That's it. That's just go, man. You're gonna shoot me. Nah, be a million. F I don't give up. Out. Yeah, I'd rather have that than the federal case, bitch. Then just point that thing away from me. That's nah, all I up. want. You point up. Nah. Point the 
thing away from Hurry me, up, I'm bitch. cool, all right? Put your hands that way, boy, because okay. if you even dare get this way, that's the cool, man. wired for sound is buying time, waiting for his backup. Stay cool, all right? Put your hands away. One false move, and he is dead. All right, let's go. Oh, let's go. Mike said you were cool. Let's go, man. Please don't point that. I'm going to shoot you, bitch. Man, you get you're getting me mad. And you're getting me mad. Just well, point the thing. Let's go. I don't... I got it in my right. arm. If it's gonna shoot, it's gonna shoot through my arm and through your body, all right? Okay, you got that. All right, then. All right, then. Just stay cool, all right? Just stay cool. Don't move. Don't move. Okay. Don't okay. Move. All right, you <laughs> bitch. Get out. Get the fuck out. San Jose, California. Bill Kiley suffered repeated harassment from a young neighbor. Kylie lived across the street and also owned the house next door. My tenants are gay, I'm gay, um, we felt this hostility. Tires started getting slashed and spit was on the window of the car. Eggs were thrown at the house. I just tried to keep a distance, stay away from it, avoid the problem. When I went to an attorney, the attorney suggested that either you have somebody with you at all times, or get a camera and catch them in the... Set up a camera in his front window, then cross the street to water his lawn. Now the bullying neighbor approaches and taunts him. He started moving forward. Then he started calling me names. Faggot, queer, whatever he could to get a rise out of me. Then the adrenaline started running in me, and fear was uh, definitely there. Nobody in the neighborhood, nobody that was watching this, did a thing. I'm not sure whether I could have depended on my neighbors to tell the story the way that it happened. Without the videotape, without the camera being on the scene, this case would never have been prosecuted. It would have been their word against my word. And interestingly enough, their word changed after they saw the videotape. Because of this video, his assailant was convicted and served two years in a juvenile correctional facility. Coming up, raging teens devastate a dream neighborhood in an alarming binge of destruction. Paintball outlaws prowl the streets on a midnight shooting spree. Merciless thugs pursue innocent victims, capturing their violent muggings on home video. In the wrong hands, video cameras can become menacing and dangerous. For some, the camera acts almost like a drug, enhancing the thrill of their crimes, which they record and play back for repeated pleasure. Ironically, this living record can be used against them. There is the element of exhibitionism with the person who is videotaping him or herself perpetrating crimes. Obviously, there's a certain thrill in the fact that certain people are likely to watch it. So there is that exhibitionistic component to it. Jacksonville, Florida. A group of teenagers break into the development of model homes, videotaping themselves in a $100,000 orgy of destruction. These kids are particularly pathetic because their only way of fitting in and belonging is by deviating. And what they've done is they've decided that, you know, whereas some proud parents will videotape their kids playing baseball and so forth, these kids are going to videotape themselves um, playing a sort of 
twisted game of Destructo, they want to memorialize what they've done. They're proud of it in a certain way. And it's kind of a trophy of their accomplishment. And it becomes a way of reliving it, reliving the enjoyment, the sadistic enjoyment they got out of initially perpetrating the crime. Los Angeles, California, in a city notorious for drive-by shootings, a gun pointed from a passing car window causes heart-stopping fear, even if it only shoots paint. Four young men prowl the city streets, shooting video as they look for victims. Do you have any change? These guns shoot paint bullets, but their terrified targets do not know that. The intent of the youthful terrorists is clear. Joyride finally ends thanks to a passing patrol car, ironically caught in the attacker's video. I knew the tape would inflame um, the judge. It would inflame anyone who saw it. We see a lot of horrible things in this business. We don't often see into the minds of the perpetrators, though. The fright you'd see and the glee that they had as they were shooting these helpless people was horrific. <laughs> They want to look in the eyes and see the terror of somebody that they've hurt, and they want to go for the maximum amount of hurt. It's evidence of their blatant sadism. I understood immediately that the worst part about the tape is the hilarity. So the strategy was to counter the outrage, and we decided to produce our own videotape to show how my client was rehabilitating himself. So we shot him. We took him down to the Museum of Tolerance. It really brought home to me that people can be intolerant with no good reason. Why wasn't Mr. Skoblar learning to be tolerant of other people before he got in trouble? The reason I made this tape was to demonstrate to the judge the sincerity of my client's remorse. The client is trying his best to rehabilitate himself. He's a kid. It wasn't funny at all. There was no good reason to hurt those people. Give me a break. I mean, this... This kid is going on videotape once again to use it for his own selfish, self-centered purposes. I mean, the first go-round was so he can get off terrorizing other people. I think it's ironic and twisted that he would try and use videotape once again to get himself off the hook. Do that, give it to me, damn it! It's the videotape that made it so outrageous. No one was willing to give these guys a break because of the hilarity. I think they should have done a year, but this judge sentenced them to four years in prison, and he did it because of the video. I just think this is really fun. <laughs> a night of terror, seen through the lens of a criminal's camera. When video justice returns. There is a release in having power over another person for some people who are so inclined. 
and they get off on it. There is a rush that's associated with it. In the presence of a video camera, particularly if they're proud of what they're doing and want to showcase it, they're more likely to get a bit more extreme. They want to show off. Get over here, man. Get over here, man. Get over here, man. Get over here, man. Washington, D.C. Five young thugs take along a video camera to record their own reign of terror, mugging and beating innocent people. The camera seems to magnify their violence. They use it to whip themselves into a frenzy. The first victim somehow manages to get away. The second is not so lucky. Needing directions, Charles Lawson walks into hell. <laughs> Knock the man out. Hit him in the back of the head, man. Hit him in the back of the head. Knock the man out. Out of one punch, knock the man out. Knock the man out. Eight years later, Lawson remembers seeing the video for the first time. It was like a rerun of a nightmare. I saw someone striking me in the face. I saw myself fall back and fall to the ground. And then... Then I see... took away my humanity and they put it on tape for others to see their power and show it off and I consider myself a good guy I'm a human being I'm a Christian human as Lawson lies helpless the men turn off the camera and one of them shoots him a gun gives you a sense of power for the moment. The video gave them a sense of power for eternity. Get up, man. Get, get, up, man. get up, show. Show, get up, man. No, man. man. Get up, man. This is straight up D.C. hustling. <laughs> Two months after the attack, police stumbled onto this video, which led to the apprehension of the attackers. The ringleaders are now serving life sentences. Key to justice happening, believe it or not, was the video just as the video was the key to the death of their inhumanity it was also the key to their ultimate conviction Thursday, it's television at its most intense. First, witness the most terrifying real-life gun battles ever caught on tape on the world's scariest police shootout. Then, two of these cops won't survive in the most unforgettable episode of the year. The season finale of New York Undercover, after World's Scariest Shootouts Thursday.